Good morning, beloveds. <clears throat> Pardon me. I just sneezed my head off just before I turned the camera on. So I'm still trying to deal with the rearrangement of my head because I was sneezing. Um, all right. <clears throat> I had my haircut last night. I went to the gym this morning. And I just sneezed my head off. <laughs> so this is going to take a minute for me to... <clears throat> sort myself out. All right. <clears throat> it is November 17th. Our title is I Experience Complete Wholeness. Our quote is, And that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded thee, commanded you, that ye may walk honestly towards them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. And that is 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 and 12. <clears throat> I know that I am some part of the divine being, that the power and the presence of that spirit is in the word I speak. And that word infinitely and perfectly and permanently makes whole. I know that I represent an individualization of the truth. The truth of wholeness, the truth of love, of re reason, and of sound mind. The truth of peace and joy. The truth of freedom and the circulation of the divine in every atom, in every function, and every organ. I empty myself of any and every thought that denies this. I know that silently, but effectively, the divine power of the invisible spirit is working here and now, this moment. <clears throat> Realizing that God, the living spirit, is the one final presence and power in the universe, I consciously enter into communion with the divine presence that is within me and within and around everything. I hold this realization with the complete certainty that I recognize I recognize that I am a perfect being, living under perfect conditions, knowing that good alone is real. I also know that good alone is the only thing that has any power either to act or to react. Everything that I do, say, or think today shall be done, said, or thought from a spiritual viewpoint of God in everything. My recognition of the power is sufficient to neutralize every false experience, make the crooked straight and the rough places plain. Definitely, I know that this recognition establishes the law of harmony in my experience, the law of prosperity, the sense of happiness and health. I experience complete wholeness. <clears throat> okay. So there's something to be said for stating how your day is going to be going. And that's kind of what he's doing. Or no, that is what he's doing today. It's like, okay, this is the beginning of my day. Let me state that everything that I think, say, or do is going to come from a spiritual viewpoint. I'm going to put that in my consciousness now. So that as I move through the day, I've already stated that this is my intention. And it sets me up to, okay, Think this way. And then when I catch myself not doing it, I can go, then it's it's not that big of a deal. It's like, okay, let me reset, go back to that God viewpoint that I started with. Um, so it's like setting your attention for the day. And that's what he's doing. There, he also said, um, he says perfect being living under perfect condition. Every time I, see, I hear that word perfect, now, I that is a trigger word for me. I freely admit it's a trigger word for me. So anytime I hear that, and this is my advice to you, if you're reading along and you come across a trigger word, just substitute the word. Um, when I hear perfect, it has a another meaning to me from my childhood that's not pleasant. So when I see Ernest using the word perfect, I think whole. I think whole. Uh, <clears throat> which is what he's talking about today. Perfect is whole. Perfect includes everything. If you look up in the dictionary, perfect doesn't mean flawless. It just means whole. Um, and uh, all right, <laughs> my sinuses are rearranging themselves. I'm sorry. Um, so I experience complete wholeness. 
And the, the Bible quote, it's from the uh, 1 Thessalonians, that ye study to be quiet and do, to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly towards them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing. I admit I'm curious. I'm like, okay, which I get because a lot of, honestly, a lot of the spiritual people that I've met are kind of quiet. And the ones that are constantly shouting at me, it makes me wonder. It's like, okay, it feels attention seeking. It's like, if you're constantly shouting at me about your spiritual, you know, it's like, are, are you really spiritual or you just need attention? Which I get, I get. So, um, so I like that it starts out that ye study to be quiet. <laughs> Um, and do your own business. Cause that's one of the things it's like for a lot of the things we mind our own business. We mind our own business. Um, we're here as oneness and there's a whole lot going around uh, us, but the only person we can manage is ourselves. So at some point we just need to get up out of everybody else's business and get on with our own work. So, all right. I know that I am some part of the divine being that the power and the presence of that spirit is in the word I speak and that word infinitely and perfectly and permanently makes whole. I am some part of the divine being. We are an infant variety in uh, manifest. We are spirit in form. And we carry the divine spark within us. We're not the whole of it, but we are a part of it. And it wouldn't be whole without us. And because we are part of that divine power, we carry the channel within us to channel that divine power, which means we can speak our word and know that we are using that divine power to speak our word. I know that I represent an individualization of the truth. And then he lists the truth that we are individualizing. The truth of wholeness, the truth of love, of reason, of sound mind. And he capitalizes mind. So frequently I joke about not being of sound mind, but when I am using the mind, there's nothing wrong with that mind. It's the use that I make of it sometimes that makes me wonder about myself. So, um, the truth of peace, and joy, the truth, and the freedom of circulation of the divine in every atom. Okay, so up to this point, we've listed all, all the truths. And now he goes, the truth and freedom of the circulation of the divine. Because the divine can't be contained. It cannot be contained. It is constantly in motion. It is constantly circulating through. We are channels for the divine. And we are made of the divine to be channels. So we are constantly bringing divine power into the world because that's what we're here to do. In our interactions with each other and such and so on, we are divine channels. That divine power is constantly flowing through us. And as it flows through us, we have the right to use it for our own purposes as long as they're in alignment with. And healing is definitely in alignment with. Um, so, uh, the truth and the freedom of the circulation of the divine in every atom, in every function and every organ, I empty myself of any and every thought that denies this. And how do you empty yourself of that? By focusing on what is and not what isn't, um, turn away from the thoughts of lack. That's one of the reasons why the teaching of turning the other cheek is so important. It's because you are looking at the you are looking at the reality and turning away from the conditions um, because the conditions are not real. They are um, temporary manifestations and when we take our attention away from them and we take the power away from them, they will go back into the no thing that they are. Um, I know that silently but effectively the divine power of the individual spirit is working here and now in this moment. 
And that's what we are obligated to know. You know, if we're going to do this kind of work, this is what we need to know. Realizing that God, the living spirit, is the one final presence and power in the universe. It's like we might incur, we're going to encounter all kinds of other presences and all kinds of other powers. But in the end, it's only one. And everything else is a part of that. I consciously enter into communion with the divine presence that is within me and within and around everything. It's a recognition. The divine presence is within me, but it's all around me all the time also. I hold this realization with complete certainty. I recognize that I am a perfect being living under perfect conditions, knowing that good alone is real. So perfect conditions. I'm living under whole conditions. It may not look like I expect it to look, but everything is here to make it what I want it to be. Everything that I need, all the building blocks to make the life that I want are around me. So if I don't have the life yet that I want, I can take comfort in knowing that the building blocks to build it are around me. And what I am obligated then to do is open myself up to the guidance to use those building blocks. <clears throat> I also know that good alone is the only thing that has any power either to act or react. Everything that I do, say, or think today shall be done, said, or thought from the spiritual viewpoint of God in everything. If you wanted marching orders. I mean, that's a way to set your intention for a day. My recognition of the power is sufficient to neutralize every false experience. And so that's it. It's like, okay, if I can see God in this situation, if I can see God in the person, if I can see God in whatever it is, then it means that I can turn my experience from whatever it has been into something better. It also makes the crooked straight and the rough places plain. When you can see God, even in the most terrible situation, then you have the power to change it. Definitely, I know that this recognition establishes the law of harmony in my experience. The law of prosperity, the sense of happiness, and health. And it is. It's Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you walk into a situation and go, where in the is God? And you gotta look. And sometimes... In those cases, the best place to look for God in a situation is right here. <laughs> it's like, that's when we turn within. Okay, like, I'm bringing God into this situation. Uh, and things will, then will start to shift. Things will start to shift. Uh, so I experience complete wholeness. All right. Um, there's two missions in here. Uh, because I said, everything that I do say or think today shall be done or said or thought from the spiritual viewpoint of God. But I think that um, I, I think that a slightly more the mission should we choose to accept it is to know silently but effectively the divine power of the invisible spirit is working here and now in this moment. I think that one is super important um, to know that the divine power is working here and now all the time. Um, all right, Dana, I'll have to go back and check the video and see if I'm the one that lost it or if you just need to reboot. Um, so that's the mission. That's the mission today. To know that the power is working here and now because the power is working through you. All right. Uh, I'm also going to encourage you, as I always do, to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like, however big or small that is. Like I said, I got my hair cut yesterday and went to the gym today. So, loving, kind, compassionate. And they're little things, but they're super important because they are, they're about self-care. They're about making me a better version of me. Um, and I... I encourage you to do it every day simply because love your you deserve your own love, you deserve your own kindness, you deserve your own compassion because you're a beloved child of God. I also would like it to become your first response. 
I would like it to become a permanent habit. Like I like to call it a default setting. So that no matter what happens, your first response is in love, in kindness, in compassion for yourself. And then within, you'll have enough to share for others. When it, when it becomes your first response for yourself, then it can be your first response for anybody. All right. Um, I'm afraid I'm running behind. That's why I'm talking a little fast. I also encourage you to engage your mind and your body. I encourage you to go get some sun first thing this morning. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful day out there today. Uh, and drink plenty of water. Big believer in drinking water. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. There's a lot of water up in here and it needs to be so that your brain can think the way it's supposed to be. Uh, bathe it in good water. Um, which includes tea. <laughs> and... I do also encourage you to open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It is all around you. It's all around you. Um, you are a divine channel, bringing that divine power into the world to create the heaven around you. So look for the good and praise it. Because the more you look, the more you see, the more you see, the more there is. That's the way it works. All right, beloveds, I am going to move into the process of my day. It's Wednesday, which means there is a living the science of mind. Um, there's a living the science of mind book study today, which is fabulous, done by a couple of practitioners. As I always say, if you're interested in anything going on, the email info at creativelife.org, and that can get you on the mailing list. It can also get you the links for anything. Uh, and then I will t suggest, oh, and there, there it goes. <laughs> there it goes. All right. I'm a little off my, I'm a little off kilter today. Oh, I'm, a, I'm always a little off kilter. That's just who I am. Um, but it's, it's going to be a good day. So I'm going to suggest that you have a great day, an amazing day, a fantastic day, a wonderful day, a stunning day, an enchanting day. Pick any and all the adjectives and adverbs that you want. That's the kind of day I want for you. I want you to have a fantabulous day, a supercalifragilisticexpialidocious day, if we just really want to be crazy, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. All right? Whatever else happens, know that you're loved. Know that you're loved. Know that spirit put you on this earth because spirit needed you and spirit loves you and spirit wants you to be happy. All right, beloveds. So take care of yourself and I will see you next time. Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. And if you need us in between that, check us out on all the social medias. There's plenty of content on the YouTube channels, both of them, the Creative Life Spiritual Center and the, uh, I'm the Running Rev Ryan, and I will get the Sunday service up on YouTube. It's been kind of a busy week already. All right, beloveds, take care of yourself. Know that you're loved. I'll see you next time.